Hello, it's Beverly with the Intuitive Interior. Welcome to the March Yin Wood Rabbit Month for 2023. Yes, we're in the year of the rabbit. It's the Yin Water Rabbit. So you're going to kind of get a little bit of that same feel for this month that the entire year will feel like, except, you know, that yin energy, is it's going to feel a little softer. Uh, it's going to feel a little less in your face, but, you know, you, you think that rabbit energy is not going to be really in your face. Well, yeah, no, when you've got the combination where the year and the month are the same animal sign it's going to act a bit like a spotlight on any issue that, um, well, that needs to be addressed. If that could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing. It could be, you know, it's just a thing. So we're the ones who get to assign whether it is a positive or a negative in our lives. Um, you know, so there's that little tricky piece, you know, which are you going to claim? Uh, anyway, getting back to the feel of, of March, before I drew the I Ching cards, I could have already told you that looking at the flying stars, that there were going to be some challenges around, um, you know, the, the family and ancestors category, the, the East, that's where the uh, uh, five star is going to be this month. Now, the five star it usually lives in the center and it kind of acts as a fulcrum point for decision-making processes, et cetera. So it's going to just make us rethink a lot about the, well, legacy that we want to leave. It's going to make us think about how we used to do things. And because the three star, um, excuse me, the, the, the partnership star is uh, also there in a, for the overall year, we're going to be looking at how do we work with others? How are, what kind of systems where that, you know, we've normally partnered with that things have gone very easily. What's, how's this going to be shifting? There are a lot of shifting sands underneath our feet. The five star is living in the Northwest all year. The Northwest is again, helpful people and travel. So there may be travel disruptions. There may be um, ideas coming from outside of our small little sphere that brings up well, more stuff for us to look at. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of ideas, especially this month, because that rabbit energy is all about multiplying and yin er, or excuse me, yin wood is all about growth. Think about, you know, how plants, it, it like spring. I mean, come on, the, the, the perfect example is spring energy that, 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 that plants are starting to grow. So that is just in a nutshell, what March is going to be like. But then I drew the cards. So where we've been is this card right here. It's number four. It's called Youthful Folly. Um, this right here is the um, Khan uh, trigram, which is water, uh, on, on top of that is gun, which is the yang earth trigram. So, uh, water underneath earth, thinking about that's kind of a lack of stability. The words on this card are impulsiveness, immaturity, bluffing, ignorance, learning, impatience, and reckless behavior. So again, you've got this person who's just dancing away on a tightrope doesn't look like there's a safety net um each you know the, the overall feeling about this card the focus line here is number of uh, six that number six in my little handy dandy book says real insight arises from a deep yes to each lesson that life brings including the painful ones if you have fallen down and skinned your knee, don't be discouraged. Just pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and keep moving. The card, though, because it's showing up in where we've been before, um, indicates that uh, we may be <laughs> using a little bit too much magical thinking, that things are just going to somehow man managely, magically work out without putting in the guardrails for safety, without, you know, making sure that the foundation that we're building things on is sturdy. Um, it's, it's, um, 
there's going to be some, it could be some roadblocks, um, you know, like the, the comments here and the, the main body of this really talks about the life lessons that we all are here to learn. We all learn them at our own pace in our own time. And if we happen to miss it the first time around, well, guess what? It'll come again. Um, the, the, uh, the, this is a good card to, when you think about, um, that Disney, uh, with the Sorcerer's Apprentice, that little short and how, you know, this, this, uh, Jew, you know, um, apprentice was, was, you know, practicing with the wand when, when the, the main sorcerer went away and, and fell asleep. And well, we all remember that. And if you don't remember it, I'm sure you can just Google the Sorcerer's Apprentice, uh, and you'll see it on YouTube, but, um, <laughs> the, the chaos that can happen when we let people who are irresponsible and out of integrity take leadership positions or look at or, or, or try to, to tell us that they know what to do and how to do it. Um, this is how we get to learn hmm, and how to recognize, wow, they're not necessarily at the level where they need to be in that position and looking at, you know, are we doing the same thing? Are we trying to bluster and bluff our way into a position that is outside of our ability to pull it all together. Now, where we are right now is this card number 48. This is called the well. The trigram here, again, uh, it's um, Sun. So this is the yin wood. Uh, again, more with the kun or kan, uh, which is the water. So we've got uh, this yin wood growth, which again, we're in the yin wood month with more water on top. The words to this one are seeking truth, wisdom, insight, intuitive knowing, return to the source and getting to the bottom of things. It takes a good sense of courage to jump straight into a, a new uh, pool of water. You can only hope that there's nothing rocky underneath. So there's definitely that uh, leap of faith that uh, will be happening this month. The focus line on this is number five. It says, you have much to offer others. Give freely of your wisdom and compassion. It is meant to be shared. Keyword there is wisdom because there is a big gap between book learning and true wisdom. The darkness that though you have to go through in order to get to that wisdom really can act as a deterrent to a lot of people. They don't want to necessarily know what they really need to know. And once you know something, you can't unknow it. A lot of times though, when I like, when I personally am doing my, my deep work, I, I crave that silence. I crave that ability to um, really tune in and find that connection to source because that is, that's not magical thinking. That is that finding that inner knowing that is always present. It's present for everyone. It just sometimes shows up with different words, um, different body sensations and different um, ways of uh, manifesting. So the um, it does take time and it does take patience. And... Well, in way too many um, parts of life, patience and time are extremely rare commodities. Um, the, the next one where we are, ah, so I knocked my computer off. <laughs> so not surprising that this next one here is card number three, <laughs> difficulty at the beginning. And since I knocked the, uh, the monitor, I think it's especially appropriate that that's the next one uh, because we are in a chrysalis phase. <clears throat> we are in a period of transformation. Uh, if you look at Western astrology, I believe that we've got this new or full moon coming up um, with something about it, Saturn and Aquarius and Virgo and Pisces. And Pisces is always about really going in deep uh, into those deep emotions and into that, that deep um, 
well, sometimes the deep, dark secrets. It's a lot about, um, it's not Pluto. So Pluto is more about, you know, endings and beginnings, but we still have some of that coming up here too. So this card uh, on the bottom here, we've got the Zhen, that's that trigram. Uh, that is Yang wood with more water on top, uh, the, the Kan. And this, the words on here are growing pains, doubts and fears, awkwardness, becoming stronger, vulnerability, and inexperience. And you can see there's a person who is breaking out of that shell. In many ways, we've been in a, you know, a, a kind of a rigid pattern. And part of the reason why for many life has felt very difficult is because that pattern is being broken. The more people, especially the, who are really working at addressing some of the systemic inequalities, some of the um, inherited uh, trauma patterns, uh, what we're starting to question belief systems that really, they may have worked for our ancestors and for the, you know, how it used to be, but it's not working anymore now. That doesn't mean that it didn't have value back then. It just means that now we don't have, have that. And, and that causes a lot of, well, feelings of vulnerability. So this focus line is number four. It says, when you've been driving along confidently in a certain direction and suddenly realize you are lost, you have two choices. You can either stop and ask for directions or you can aggressively push on ahead and end up needing a tow truck to get you out of the mud. It's your call. <laughs> I kind of had this situation uh, myself when I went for a hike and realized, oh, okay, it's a really dark and the app that I thought I was using, the thought was I was getting, that was getting me to the right spot, didn't have a clue. So that little, you know, 25, 30 minute hike turned into a lot longer, but it was still fun and it became uh, an adventure. And, you know, sometimes adventuring is good for the soul. The, um, I want to just read this because there's, there's a lot more value here than I can share. Um, uh, it says what might seem like chaos and, and confusion around you or within you now is actually a much needed jolt. It's becoming apparent that certain aspects of the life to which you've been accustomed are dramatically being shaken up. And whether you think you're ready for it or not, the outgrown is already falling away. Just as the smallest seed requires tremendous energy to break open, once it does, it leaves the shell behind. Then, faced with innumerable challenges, it emerges from the darkness into the light. And this happens in the right timing of things. We are I mean, thinking about that seed metaphor again. The, um, you know, that, that yin wood, it has to break open that seed in order for it to grow. Um, it has to have that water, that yin water of this year to soften the soil so that gentle sprout can actually come up. Um, but the, the thing that I like about this card is it's really evoking the image of flight. I mean, it's one thing for a plant to break open that seed and grow up. Think about a bird, a baby bird. You come out of that and there's no feathers. I mean, there's just like little down and the, the, the mother bird has to take time to nurture that bird. This is that wisdom piece coming in again. They have to know what to feed that bird. You have to be receptive to that as life outside of that shell becomes more and more familiar. And then comes the challenge of actually learning to fly. So the final card, usually I'm only doing three cards, but as sometimes happens, a fourth one just pops right out. So the fourth one is number 14, prosperity. This to me was a really lovely balance on the bottom to help us understand that, yes, we are, we've had our youthful folly. 
We're digging in deep. We're going to learn how to ride that bicycle without the training wheels and find, figure out how to fly on our own. And it's all going to be worth it because prosperity is underlying the whole thing. So this one is wealth, good fortune, success, express gratitude by supporting others and material possessions. Uh, the Chan is underneath Li, which is uh, Yang metal and fire. That focus line on this one is number five. It says, <laughs> and this again, good, good thing to keep in mind. It's not always wise for parents to be best buddies with their children. And it's not always a good idea for the boss to be out every night drinking beers with uh, their crew. Sometimes, or somebody's got to keep their eye on the bottom line and how it looks right now. And that somebody is you. If you're having too much fun at the party to play the role right now, that's fine too, but you should appoint somebody else to look after it until you're ready to change gears. When there's a time of transition, when water is being poured from one container to another, you need to figure out how much that liquid, you know, how, how much time it takes to pour it from one spot to another. If your capacity is huge, you can accept a lot of change really fast. But if you're trying to take a bucket and pour it into like a, a narrow mouth bottle, you have to take more time. Otherwise, that excess or that, that, that precious liquid that you're, you're transferring is going to get splashed and there's going to be so much effort wasted. Wasting prosperity, wasting that, uh, that energy um, by thinking that you can be on the same, do the same things that you used to do before, it's not going to work. I know I'm talking about having to figure out how to learn to live in that gray zone. Not very many people are really comfortable in that gray zone. They want, they want a yes. They want to know, just tell me what to do. Don't make me reinvent the wheel. And that's not going to be how it is this month. That's just not how it's going to be. And unfortunately it's not going to be how that's not going to happen. Um, it's not going to be how it is for a long time. We are moving into um, a new 20 year cycle that begins in February of 2024. And in many ways, we have been in that shadow period since 2017, and it's only getting more intense, finding the wisdom, finding that calm, finding that deep inner reserve as the world moves from one based on, um, well, Make, make as much money now as you possibly can. Uh, we got we to gotta just keep, keep just moving and grooving and, and, and gutting it out, and no matter how tired you are, into a new 20-year cycle where, yes, there's still going to be a lot of technology. There's still going to be a, a need for, um, for that kind of energy, but collaboration and control and boundaries. It's, you know, we're, we're going from a yang earth 20 year cycle to a fire cycle. Uh, fire is great. Fire is like that candle that, that, uh, that, that inspires the whole, you know, the, the, the room, you know, one, one little tea light can brighten up an entire room or it can burn the house down. So calm, <laughs> finding that calm is a good thing to cultivate now so that when you, the time comes, you can get back to your source, get back to grounding. Um, anyway, that's a lot of information. Hope you find it helpful. Uh, in the meantime, if you would like to know what's happening for you and what are some great days to, to look forward to uh, for the month uh, that goes from March 6th through April 4th, all of this energy is, is present during that time frame. Um, Give me a buzz. I've got my contact information below, or you can send a message here and I'll do my best to respond. I hope you have a wonderful March. Find as many ways to 
experience joy, uh, to experience pleasure, do some forest bathing, take advantage of that spring renewal. Have a great rest of your month. Thanks so much for listening. Please like and subscribe.